I have selected a poem by the famous Iraqi poet Badr Shakir Sayyab from his uh, entitled Hymn to the Rain from his famous collection also carrying the same title, Hymn, Hymn of the Rain. I will start by talking a little bit about uh, Sayyab, his life, and his place in modern Arabic poetry. And then I would read the poem in English, followed by the original Arabic. <clears throat> in one of the rare public lectures that Sayyab gave while he's still able to lecture, he commented on the role of the modern poet and explained that what differentiates the poet of today from his previous counterpart is his remarkable resemblance to Saint John the Divine. Like Saint John, in Sayyab's opinion, the modern poet's eyes have been ravaged by his vis visions as he perceives the seven sins pervading the world like a terrifying monster. Through this direct use of such a comparison, there can be no doubt as to how critical the apocalyptic vision was for Sayyab. This is hardly surprising because the modern era poet viewed himself precisely as an inspired visionary who is destined to carry the sins of his people and ultimately sacrifice himself so that redemption can be realized. Sayyab in his later years wished to die as a martyr, so that the Iraqi revolution might be victorious. And Sayyab's friend, the Lebanese poet Khalil Hawi, who shared his, this same political conviction, literally committed suicide as a protest to both the Israeli invasion of Beirut on June 6, 1982, and also to, to mark the shameful Arab silence towards such a humiliating defeat. Hawi, like Sayyab, believed that his death as a sacrificial lamb would fertilize the Arab land so that resurrection could become possible and the season of sterility would pass. The generation of the avant-garde poets of modern Arabic poetry and particularly their leader, Sayyab, all of whom were persecuted, imprisoned, exiled, or those who chose to live in exile, shared the same fate of the tragic hero, the fate of a man against the empire. This new role of the modern Arab poet necessitated a new medium to help express his vision. Modern Arab poets collectively rejected the traditional form of poetry and searched for a new innovative technique. This new technique is associated with the name of Sayyab, who wrote the first free verse poem in modern Arabic poetry. Sayyab was a real tragic hero, the Adonis of modern Arabic poetry. Picture him tied to a hospital bed like Prometheus, chained to the rock, unwilling to yield, believing in the dignity and future of mankind, like Job, patiently bearing the tremendous pain and waiting for a Herculean miracle to break out of his misery, even up to the last day of his short life of 38 years. Sayyab, whose life spanned from 1926 to 1964, lived a short but hard life of social failure, poverty, emotional deprivation, imprisonment, exile, and physical illness, which caused him to face a painful and lonely death in a hospital in Kuwait, away from his beloved Iraq and from his wife and children. Sayyab's mother died when he was six. He was very attached to her, and when he kept asking about her, he was told that she would return the day after tomorrow, a frustrated promise 
that he painfully recalls in his famous poem, Hymn of the Rain. During his college years, Sayyab read all major sources of Arabic and English literature, and soon he was to make a personal discovery that he later passed on to all of his contemporaries of young poets. He discovered T.S. Eliot. This was his first important contribution to modern Arabic poetry. He made three other significant contributions. First, he was the founder of the free verse movement. Second, he introduced the role of the poet as the redeemer. And third, he popularized the use of mythology. Despite repeated political arrest, imprisonment, exile in Lebanon, Iran, and Kuwait, Sayyab's fame continued to gather momentum inside and outside Iraq. 1960 was a bittersweet year for Sayyab. His most celebrated collection of poetry, Hymn of the Rain, appeared and it gained instant success. This was also the year when his health began to deteriorate rapidly due to a disease that caused the poet to suffer a gradual but steady paralysis in his back from the waist down. This marks the phase of his preoccupation with death, death and estrangement from an already shaky marital relationship. The last four years of his life were the most prolific, while the shadow of death haunted him. During this period, he wrote some of his best poetry and also reintroduced the genre of self-eulogy into Arabic poetry. His poem, that we will read tonight, Hymn of the Rain, combines both autobiographical and nationalistic elements. The poem describes Sayyab's feelings as he watches the drops of rain falling across the Arabian Gulf during the period of his political exile in Kuwait. The emotional climate in the poem is charged with nostalgia for his childhood and his homeland. The identity of the female image of the opening stanza is never revealed throughout the poem. Perhaps he was addressing his mother, his homeland, or mother nature. Sayyab poignantly juxtaposes the rain as life-giving and an instrument of fertility to the daunting hunger in Iraq. Other important images in the poem include the crows, the locusts, and the thousand serpents drinking the nectar from a flower nourished by the Euphrates. All of these images are subtle references to the colonial powers who were squandering the wealth of Iraq, leaving its people hungry. For the poet, Iraq is the gift of the Euphrates. And according to Iraqi popular legend, the Euphrates is one of the four rivers that originated in paradise. In addition, Sayyab remained the child who never recovered from losing his mother. Clearly, the child in this poem is Sayyab himself. <clears throat> of course, Poetry loses, as we all know, in translation. So it's really, we're looking at the image, not the original. Hymn of the Rain. <clears throat> Your eyes are two palm tree forests in early light, or two balconies from which the moonlight recedes. When they smile, your eyes, the vines put forth their leaves and lights dance like moons in a river, rippled by the blade of an oar at break of day, as if stars were throbbing in the depth of them. And they drown in a mist of sorrow, translucent, like the sea stroked by the hand of nightfall. The warmth of winter is in it, the shudder of autumn, and death and birth, darkness and light, 
A sobbing flares up to tremble in my soul, and a savage elation embracing the sky, frenzy of a child frightened by the moon. It is as if archways of mist drank the clouds, and drop by drop dissolved in the rain, as if children snickered in the vineyard bowers, the song of the rain rippled the silence of birds in the trees, rain, rain, evening yawned from low clouds, heavy tears are streaming still. It is as if a child before sleep was rambling on about his mother. A year ago he went to wake her, did not find her, then was told, for he kept on asking after tomorrow. She'll come back again after tomorrow. She must come back again. Yet his playmates whisper that she is there in the hillside sleeping her death forever. Eating the earth around her, drinking the rain as if a lonely fisherman gathering nets cursed the waters in fate and scattered a song of moonset rain, rain. Do you know what sorrow the rain can inspire? Do you know how gutters weep when it pours down? Do you know how lost a solitary person feels in the rain, endless, like spilt blood, like hungry people, like love, like children, like the dead, endless is the rain? Your two eyes take me wandering with the rain. Lightning from across the gulf sweeps the shores of Iraq with stars and shells as if a dawn were about to break from them, but night pulls them, pulls, pulls over them a coverlet of blood. I cry out to the gulf, O oh, gulf, giver of pearls, shells, and death, and the echo replies as if lamenting, O oh, gulf, giver of shells and death. I can almost hear Iraq husbanding the thunder, storing lightning in the mountain and plains so that if the seal were broken by men, the winds would leave in the valley not a trace of sound. I can almost hear the palm trees drinking the rain, hear the villages moaning and emigrants with oars and sails fighting the gulf winds and storm and thunder singing rain, rain, rain. Yeah and there is hunger in Iraq. The harvest time scatters the grain in it that crows and locusts may gobble their full. Ganneries and stones grind on and on. Mills turn in the fields with them men turning rain, rain. When came the night for leaving, how many tears we shed. We made the rain a pretext not wishing to be blamed. Since we had been children, the sky would be clouded in winter time, and, do and down would pour the rain, and every year when earth turned green, the hunger struck us. Not a year has passed without hunger in Iraq. Rain, rain. In every drop of rain, a red and yellow color buds from the seeds of flowers, every tear wept by the hungry and naked people, and every spilt drop of slaves' blood is a smile aimed at a new dawn. A nipple turning rosy in an infant's lips in a young world of tomorrow, bringer of life. Rain, in the rain, Iraq will blossom again. I cry out to the gulf, O oh, gulf, giver of pearls, shells, and death. The echo replies as if lamenting, O oh, gulf, giver of shells and death. And across the sands from among its lavish gifts, the gulf scatters fuming froth and shells. And the skeletons of miserable drowned emigrants who drank death forever from the depth of the gulf, from the ground of its silence, and in Iraq, a thousand, thousand serpents drink the nectar from a flower the Euphrates has nourished with dew. 
I hear the echo ringing in the gulf, rain, rain, and still the rain pours down. <clears throat> and this is the Arabic original. Unshudatul Matar Ainaki Ainaki Rabata Nahilin Saatas Sahar O Shurfatani Rahayan Aan Humal Kamar. عيناك حين تبسمان تورق الكروم وترقص الأضواء كالأقمار في نهر يرجه المجذاف وهنا ساعة السحر كأنما تنبض في غوريهما النجوم وتغرقان في ضباب من أسن شفيف كالبحر صرح اليدين فوقه المساء دفء الخريف فيه وارتعاشة الخريف والموت والميلاد والظلام والضياء فتستفيق ملء روحي رعشة البكاء ونشوة وحشية تعانق السماء كنشوة الطفل إذا خاف من القمر كأن أقواس السحاب تشرب الغيوم وقطرة فقطرة تذوب في المطر وكركر الأطفال في عرائش الكروم ودغدغت صمت العصافير على الشجر أنشودة المطر مطر 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 تثاءب المساء والغيوم ما تزال تسح ما تسح من دموعها الثقال كأن طفلا بات يهذي قبل أن ينام بأن أمه التي أفاق منذ عام فلم يجدها ثم حين لج في السؤال قالوا له بعد غد تعود لا بد أن تعود وإن تهامس الرفاق أنها هناك في جانب التل تنام نومة اللحود تسف من ترابها وتشرب المطر كأن صيادا حزينا يجمع الشباك ويلعن المياه والقدر وينثر الغناء حين يأفل القمر مطر مطر أتعلمين أي حزن يبعث المطر وكيف تنشج المزاريب إذا انهمر وكيف يشعر الوحيد فيه بالضياع بلا انتهاء بلا انتهاء كالدم المراق كالجياع كالحب كالأطفال كالموتى هو المطر ومقلتاك بيتطيفان مع المطر وعبر أمواج الخليج تمسح البروق سواحل العراق بالنجوم والمحار كأنها تهم بالشروق فيسحب الليل عليها من دم دثار أصيح بالخليج يا خليج يا واهب اللؤلؤ والمحار والردى فيرجع الصدى كأنه النشيج يا خليج يا واهب المحار والردى أكاد أسمع العراق يذخر الرعود ويخزن البروق في السهول والجبال حتى إذا ما فض عنها ختمها الرجال لم تترك الرياح من ثمود في الوادي من أثر أكاد أسمع النخيل يشرب المطر وأسمع القرى تئن والمهاجرين يصارعون بالمجاذيف وبالقلوع عواصف الخليج والرعود منشدين مطر 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 وفي العراق جوع وينثر الغلال فيه موسم الحصاد لتشبع الغربان والجراد وتطحن الشوان والحجر رحا تدور في الحقول حولها بشر 
مطر مطر وكم ذرفنا وكم ذرفنا ليلة الرحيل من دموع ثم اعتللنا خوف أن نلام بالمطر ومنذ أن كنا صغارا كانت السماء تغيم في الشتاء ويهطل المطر وكل عام حين يعشب الثرى نجوع ما مر عام والعراق ليس فيه جوع مطر 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 في كل قطرة من المطر حمراء أو صفراء من أجنة الزهر وكل دمعة من الجياع والعرات وكل قطرة تراق من دم العبيد هي ابتسام في انتظار مبسم جديد أو حلمة توردت على فم الوليد في عالم الغد الفتي واهب المطر مطر 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 سيعشب العراق بالمطر أصيح بالخليج يا خليج يا واهب اللؤلؤ والمحار والردى فيرجع الصدى كأنه النشيج يا خليج يا واهب المحار والردى وينثر الخليج من هباته الكثار على الرمال رغوه الأجاج والمحار وما تبقى من عظام بائس غريق من المهاجرين ظل يشرب الردى من لجة الخليج والقرار وفي العراق ألف أفعى تشرب الرحيق من زهرة يروها الفرات بالندى وأسمع الصدى يرن في الخليج مطر 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 ويهطل المطر Thank you.